bloody hell it's cold in here. <laughs> Good afternoon crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I've been meaning to try and get this, uh, this next part um, of the lithium iron Makita 18 volt battery pack repair saga fix thing, call it what you like, video done. Uh, unfortunately I've been all over New Zealand with work and this hasn't happened has it but I'm progressing and I've done a lot of research while I've been away and to be perfectly honest these lithium batteries are bloody dangerous aren't they especially it seems the cheaper variants that come out of China so people you know if you're going to be playing around with these batteries please be extremely cautious um, now remember I do have a few sort of failed cells that we've taken out of uh, the donor battery pack 2 that we sort of forfeited. Um, so maybe as a conclusion to all of this, once these, hopefully these remaining three battery packs are all fixed, we'll then have a bit of fun maybe deliberately blowing up or destroying or seeing how explosive those duff cells are because from what I've seen on YouTube, and there's plenty of videos out there on it, they are pretty dangerous, aren't they? Anyway, so moving on, what came in the post was the first of those circuit boards, and the ones that arrive, already arrived now, will fit those particular, I've written down the box, those particular size battery packs. So, having a little look, because I've just come out of the, out of the house, I'm sort of on my, on my lunch break at the moment. I'm working from home today. This one is a BL8, sorry, 1815, which is the 1.3 amp hour, the smaller one. And as it says, just looked on the eBay uh, purchase, this particular circuit board inside the box, there's two in there, will do the smaller cells. Now, will it also do the larger? Let's have a little look. So, oh, that's a small one. Hang on. That's the large box. So, that one. The 3 amp hour is at 1830, obviously 30. So, yes, the same circuit board will also work for the larger battery packs. So we've got those two in here, and I did actually open one up the other day when they first arrived. I was so keen to have a little look, see what was going on. So there's, sorry guys, I keep forgetting to show you stuff on the camera. There we are, look. So that's the circuit board that we've got to install. and. Again, I've watched some videos on YouTube of other people installing these and they don't look too hard. There's only three wires that need to be installed. And we've got the main ground or negative, should I say, not ground, the main negative, the main positive, and then there's this little sort of feed wire which keeps the board alive. And uh, yeah, from memory there, look, you see there's one, it's run off that little terminal there. So I think installation, pretty damn easy. Um, now, when I was initially looking for these circuit boards on eBay, I was looking for boards that had this long steel piece, extension piece that went down to that terminal there, and I couldn't find any, and it turns out you can't get those. This is the style you get, and those wires should reach to that same uh, point. But what I can do if I want to is I can always cut that steel down a bit shorter, you know, rather than cut it off at that terminal there, I can sort of cut it maybe here and then solder the wire to it there. So there's plenty of flexibility. <sighs> but what we need to do first, before I solder these on, and this was brought up uh, by um, a bit of research and all the comments that have come through, there's been many, many comments, is that the voltage of each cell needs to be about the same. Now these battery packs have been stood for a few weeks whilst we've been waiting for these circuit boards to arrive. So I think the first thing we need to do is very quickly go through the three remaining battery packs and take a cell voltage reading to make sure that they're all you know, pretty similar. I don't know what the tolerance is, but I do know that if one of the cells is, you know, one or more of the cells is quite different in voltage reading to the, to the remaining cells, little circuit board basically tells the charger or the charger gets the information from the circuit board or somehow is aware of this voltage differential between the cells and refuses to charge the battery pack so it may well be that I might need to charge up individual cells to get them all up to the same kind of reading 
before we apply it to the uh, to the actual Makita charger. Now, whilst we're on Makita chargers, alert something else. Um, these green ones here, this one, is a fast charger, and it puts into those battery packs up to nine amps, which is an awful lot. And they do seem to charge up bloody quick, and they have a little fan inside, and the fan blows air into the battery pack to help cool those those cells as they're being charged, because there's an awful lot of heat being created. But I also have another one of these chargers, and it's black. And I didn't think there was any difference between the two chargers. I didn't really look. I was just, you know, Joe Public. Get the get the drill, get the charger, get the batteries, put batteries in charger, charges up, put in drill, drill works. That was about the extent of my knowledge in this area until recently. So let me find the other battery charger. I'll show you that, and then we'll get down to some business and do some work getting these uh, battery packs fixed, hopefully. Just back in a second. Right, I'm back. Been under the bench. Now, I don't, I've never really used this black one. It, it came with the angle grind, Makita angle grinder we bought a few years ago, and it looks like that. See, quite different in the colour, but other than that, it probably functions about the same. And the part number is that one there, DC18. SD and it says NIMA and Leon 7.2 to 18 volts standard stuff but when you look on the back you can see here wherever it is there we are, look 2.6 amps so less than a third output to the green chargers but I suppose ultimately they do charge the batteries up so if you've got both like me then in the future I'm going to be using the black charger because it's going to put a lot less stress on those cells in the battery packs and hopefully they're going to last a bit longer but that's just you know food for thought and I suppose if I'm in the workshop and I'm doing something and I've flattened both batteries and I need one to charge up quickly because I'm doing a lot of work I'm going to be highly tempted to still use the green charger but if I can get these other three batteries fixed because remember I bought two new ones that will give me five batteries to play around with and then I'm more inclined to be able to use the black charger so better for everybody really isn't it okay so first job is let's get the camera set up and the multimeter and we'll take readings for battery packs one three and four now we've only got one of the larger 3 amp hour packs remaining which is battery pack 1 and then we've got two of the smaller 1.3 amp hour battery packs uh, which and they're a much newer pack they're probably three years younger than the larger one okay let's do that now I've also already made up some special bits of cardboard to write down our results and then we can talk about what we get and uh, I've already got a power supply out to do as a, a quick charge. I don't know how well it's going to work, and given the explosions that I've seen on YouTube this morning and last night, I really don't want that to happen in the workshop. Not when it's not planned. Okay, here we go. Right, power pack number one. And we're going to need our multimeter. So hopefully you can see this as well. Oh, on there. You see that on the screen? Uh, a bit of glare, isn't there? Sorry, guys. We find something to stick under there. That might work. That gonna work? Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Right now, cells. One to the equal five. So one is nearest to me. I'm not bothered whether it's a negative reading or a positive reading. We just want to get a reading. Can't bother to keep swapping the leads around. Okay, 3.28, sorry, 3.728, 3.728 volts, right, cell number two, now these are in pairs obviously, but you know, they're all soldered together, so it's impossible to take a reading of separate cells, so 3.763, 3.763 volts. Man, it's a horrible wet day today. Right, moving down the line. Ah, 
2.891 volts. Okay, and that, I, think, I wonder if that's the one we changed. It is. That's the one that we uh, we fitted. Okay. Right. Next. I'll tell you what, I'm doing a lot of work trying to get these battery packs fixed, don't I? Uh, 3.705. Okay. Three point seven zero five volts, and I was reading on the on the some of the stuff that I've been going through that these battery packs should never be discharged below three point seven volts. So it says, no. all right, three point seven one six, three point seven one six volts. So the problem problem child with that one is the new cell. Well, I say new, the second hand new cell that we fitted just there look that's only at 2.8 so that's going to need a bit of a boost to bring it up I think to around the rest of them okay that's that one done let's move on to power pack number three because we're trying to do this in a reasonably I won't say a scientific but a reasonably conclusive manner all right one battery one Now look, take that off. What have we got? Three point four five eight. Three point four five eight volts. Right, cell number two. Now these are individual cells now because this is a smaller pack. Holy shit. One point four one six. Oh man. That's not good, is it? And is that the one we replaced? I think it is, isn't it? It's got the solder on it. Damn. Okay, well, it was charged up before. I don't know why it's gone flat. Alright, cell number three is three. Come oh, on, you can do better than that. 3.429. 3.429 volts. And next one. Three, oh come on, jeez, get a grip. 3.842, that's pretty good. 3.842 volts. And <clears throat> cell number five, which is that one, 3.843. 3.843 volts. Just got to double check those last two because they both seem to be exactly the same bloody reading. It is. It's right. Into there, look. Yep. Okay. That's verified. Okay. So we've got problem child cell number two on that one, which needs a bit of a charge. And battery pack number four. Cell number one nearest to me. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can for you because I know you, you hate long videos. Oh shit. 1.097. Christ. 1.097 volts. Alright, cell number two. If I can get in there. 3.492. 3.492 volts. One, thinking on it. Three point four nine three. Cool. Three point four nine three volts. Pretty similar to the last one. And cell number four, which is that one. Three point four nine three. Three point four nine three again. And lastly. The last cell, which is that one, 3.493. Wow, they're good. 3.493 volts. I wonder how they can be so close. It's great. Isn't it? Must be some kind of management thing going on. Ugh. Right, so, problem child cell number one. So, each of those battery packs, this is battery pack number one, the larger one, we've got cell number three that needs a bit of a boost. That doesn't look too bad. I'm really concerned actually about 
the other two packs, the smaller battery packs, that one there, battery 3, has got one cell that's down to 1.4, and uh, battery pack number 4 has got cell 1, which is just above 1 volt, which is pretty damn dismal, isn't it? So, <clears throat> I think the next job is to charge up those cells to the so they match really the voltage of the remaining cells. Unfortunately, all the rest seems to be pretty, yeah, pretty close. And then we'll try them in the charger because the charger will reject the battery uh, from being charged. It won't accept it to charge unless the cells all have a similar, and I don't know what the tolerance is, a similar voltage in them. So we'll do that, and if any of them come back to life, great, we'll leave them on charge, and if they don't, then what we'll do is we'll fit the circuit board. Now, if you've not watched any of the previous videos, something very important to know about these circuit boards, or the original Makita circuit board, and I've come across this from a number of different sources, but I haven't proved it, is if the charger, when you put the battery on to charge, if the charger rejects that battery for charge, you'll get a red and a green alternating light. And that's, here we are, look, here's one I made earlier. That's that one down there where, the, where both the two colors are flashing. And you'll probably see that later on anyway in this video. If, it ex if that happens, three times. Now I'm not sure if it's three times in a row or three times in total, then something triggers in the logic in the circuit board in that uh, battery pack and it basically renders that battery pack unable to be charged ever. It basically thinks there's some kind of fault. Now I can understand from me, Makita's perspective because they're using the lithium ion batteries and the potential for ultimate disaster, an explosion and potential death and whatever else you want to call it, um, why they're being so cautious about all the safety checks that are in place to prevent these batteries from being charged should there be uh, a fault considered, you know, whether they've been discharged too fast, charged up too fast, fast, whether they're too warm, whether one of the cells is down on voltage. There are many different parameters or many different things that can cause this battery to not be accepted for charge. So, you know, throw dues, Makita. And, you know, the more I get into this, the more I'm thinking, hey, maybe I should just go and buy a new genuine battery and have done with it. But then there's another part of me going, but Andy, they're $130 each. You're an idiot. You can fix this. So I thought I'd give it a go. And here we are, facing death, imminent danger at least. Right, so we're going to have a go at charge up those cells. So I've got my uh, bench power supply, which has got a variable voltage. We have to have a bit more of a voltage than what's in the battery. It could all go disastrously wrong. I think one thing I need to know about is how much current flow there is into that battery. So I can rig up, uh, we can put the the, the in circuit uh, an ammeter so we can monitor that as well because if we do start to get a reaction from the battery then at least we know what amperage rate has caused that and know to stay well away from that in the future it's all about learning isn't it okay I don't um, I don't actually know what the well the amperage rating for each of these cells if knowing that this is a 3 amp hour and it's got 10 cells, 5 uh, pairs of cells, this has only got 5 individual cells, then each of those cells will be about one, uh, 100, sorry, one and a half thousand milliamps or 1.5 amps is what they're able to deliver each at an absolute maximum. Now, you know, I could be wrong but I'm just you know, going by what's on the outside of the pack there's nothing written on the cells to give me any indication otherwise and the the numbers and stuff that are on the cells which you can only just really see there they they seem to be more like a batch number as opposed to a capacity rating so there's not a lot of information something else that is spot on this uh, cell pack number four is a potential another potential problem and that's just here there's a little break in the insulation the outer casing and uh, 
there's a bit of rust. Now that could be potentially really bad, so I might have to swap that cell as well at some point, but I don't know yet. Maybe it'll go bang. Now, with all the noise that's just stopped, Ben is currently cutting the grass in the rain with his twin-engined lawnmower. You'll see that in a video, I'm sure, pretty soon. It's a monstrous machine. Okay, I'll get set up and I'll see you very shortly and we'll get these uh, cells charged up. Right, so I'm back. I can't get Ben to stop cutting the grass. He's on a mission and it's bloody noisy, so my apologies for that. Now, got the power supply. I've set it to five volts. I reckon that's gonna be sufficient voltage differential to charge that cell up. And I've got the multimeter set on amps for current. So, just to confirm everything's working as it should do, let's do a quick test with a bulb. Okay, so I'm going to let's use the blue one, I think, whatever that is. On there, and then ground onto there. Okay, so that should now light up. Oh, don't touch when I turn the power supply on. Yeah, maybe use the yellow one then, maybe there's not enough current for that one. What's going on? Oh, it's come off, there we are. That's more like it, hang on then, we'll turn the voltage back down again. Right. There we go, look. Okay, so that's 0.3 of an amp going through there at 5 volts, so we know that the circuit's good. So we'll just turn that off for a second now. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay, goodbye bulb. Okay, battery pack. Negative, positive. So we can flick that around so we're not going to get confused. There we go, look. Right, positive. Negative. We've got to make sure we're charging this battery up the right way as well. And we're also going to need a voltmeter so we can check the residual voltage once we stop charging on that cell. Jeez, there's a lot going on, isn't there? All right, so we'll put that on this side. Stick that down. You see that one all right? I think you can, just maybe. Maybe I'll stick the pen underneath. Will that help? It will. Okay, so we'll stick that onto volts. And we'll just check, first of all, that we've got... In fact, that can go over there, can't it? Don't need that on here. Okay, so it was cell number three on battery pack one. And we marked up positive and negative. This is the positive side. So positive is here. Negative is here. What have we got? Overload going on. DC, oh it's on millivolts that's why, select, you're an idiot. DC, DC volts. It was on auto arrange, it should have sorted itself out. Okay, so uh, negative this side, oh peace and quiet, thank god for that. 2.88 yeah, that's about right, isn't it? So that, that all that's working correctly. Jeez. Okay, let's give it a bit of a blast. So we'll turn on the power. And just double check, positive is my left hand. I'm gonna need some safety glasses for this. I don't like the idea of this. Okay, safety glasses are on. Here we go. You might not like it. So we're putting in there one and a half amps. Just under, look at that. All right, let's see what the voltage is now. I know we haven't charged it very much, but you never know. So we're back up to three volts now, 2.99. So it's definitely making a difference. I can 
see some editing coming on shortly. So positive is that side. Let's not get it mixed up. All right. So maybe I should leave that for a few minutes just to charge without being stood right next to it. We had a bit, of, a bit of a stall session going on there. And you see the current flow is dropping down because there's less voltage differential as that battery charges up. That's interesting, isn't it? Pretty cool. Okay, that's been about a minute. I'm just really interested to see how this has changed voltage wise. And what have we got this time? 3.18. So it's definitely going up, it's definitely accepting a charge. This is really good. And then we can try it in the charger, can't we? Right, positive, negative. Now, I know you can get automatic chargers that will charge each cell individually. You can get those off um, places like Amazon and eBay and stuff, and they're only about 20 bucks. But I wanted to try and show a way of doing this without any sort of specialist equipment, stuff that you've got kicking around the house, because the more you buy, the more money you spend trying to fix your old power packs, well, the less relevance it is, to be honest, because you may as well just spend that money on new ones. But it's definitely turned into a bit of a saga. So I want to get this up to about 3.7, 3.75 would be a good one. It that's sort of in the middle of what we've got on the other cells. Let's try that. Jeez. No smoke yet. 3.28. It is going up. Right, I'm just going to flip this over. That's the cell we're currently charging up. This is the positive end, so I'm going to just stick that on there, which is a little crocodile clip. Link that to our output from the ammeter. And then we've got the earth which is linked there that could go on to that can go on to there so now she's charging excellent without me having to hold it and we've got 1.1 amps of charge going in and we can now take a reading on the voltmeter actual fact I can probably plumb that up as well so let's stick that it under there, that should give us our earth, and then I should be able to stick that on there. There's our voltage. So we've got four volts, 4.02 volts at the moment going in across the battery, and we've got 1.126 amps of current flowing through the circuit. So if I turn the power supply off, we should see the residual voltage of the cell now. So we're at, say it's holding it, doesn't it? We're at 3.29. So a little bit longer to go yet. So I'm going to whiz off and get a coffee. I'm going to come back and we'll see what that voltage is. Hopefully the battery won't have exploded by that point. Jeez. Maybe I should leave the camera rolling. Could get awfully interesting, couldn't it? I'll do that, but I'm going to move you away a little bit.
job, Dan Benjamin, these bloody lawnmowers. Okay, what are we up to? So we've got basically an amp going through the circuit. And this has turned itself off, so we'll turn it back on again. DC volts, yeah. Right, we'll turn the power supply off. And then we should see the residual voltage across the cell. 3.48. Hey, we're getting there. All right, so we'll turn it back on again. We'll leave it a little bit longer. There's no signs of explosion or smoke. Is it getting warm? No, it doesn't seem to be getting warm either, which is actually quite a good sign, believe it or not. Don't like it when it gets warm. Okay, well, we'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, I'll have a quick cigarette and I'll come back. Okay, another few more minutes have gone by. Just turn the power supply off. Okay, we're getting there now. 3.5. Right, back on again. And I mean, we're only putting one amp through, basically, in this particular pack, two cells. Remember, each cell can cope with one and a half amps, so we're actually charging it well below certainly what the green, the bluey green charger, or blue charger, will put through this pack. That thing can kick out 9 amps, so don't think we're going to be causing the cells any real stress at this level of charging, and it isn't taking too long to get the results that we want, whether it's going to hold that charge or not, because we've gone from two point, almost 2.9 volts up to, what are we at now, let's have a look, 3.51 volts, so 3.5 volts, so we've gone up 0.6 of a volt in realistically only about 10 minutes of charging so things are looking pretty good still don't trust the power pack in any way whatsoever after what I've seen on the internet this morning and you seem to find that when things go wrong with these battery packs they go wrong really really quickly so I'm standing well back at the moment Now, quite ironically, <laughs> my phone is going a bit flat and I film everything on my phone, so I'm using my <laughs> battery power pack to charge the phone, and I'm pretty confident that inside here are some more of these cells, so yeah, we need them, don't we? We rely on them every day. Okay, I think we need to increase the voltage differential a little bit to speed things up. We can afford that because we're still down on amps, I think. Crank that up a little bit. So we're now at 4.3 volts and we've got 1.2 amps going into the cells. And I'm watching them very closely. There's no heat, which is good. So we'll leave that for another few minutes and we'll come back and we'll see what our voltage reading is. Okay, another two minutes have gone by, roughly turning off the power supply and we've got 3.55 so we're not really going much up much more anymore so back, power, power packs back on again power supply I'm just going to crank up that voltage again slightly okay so we've got just shy of 1.5 amps going through both those two cells to charge. We'll give it another two minutes at that, and then we'll see where we're at. Sounds like Ben's returning to base with his lawnmower, so I'm going to have to stop filming for a minute. I'm sure you're all dying to see what kind of lawnmower creation he's made. Okay, we've got meters shutting down on us, it's taking too long. Right, so we're still at 4.45 volts, we've got 1.3 amps going through. About another two minutes have passed. Ben's currently riding away on the lawnmower to try and give us some kind of audio quality. Thanks, Ben. Right, we'll turn the power supply off and we'll see what the residual voltage is. Well, we needed that up 2.62, so we'll keep going. Any kind of heat? No. There's no real difference in heat between any of the cells. So we're not putting the cells in any kind of real stress, I don't think, doing this. Which is my main concern. 
don't want an explosion at this point in time. Right, we'll give it another few minutes and then we'll check it again. Probably the world's most boring video this, sorry, watching a battery charge up, but given the fact that at any point in time that cell could explode, potentially, I think it's important that I film all of it, because as soon as I turn the camera off, well, you know what will happen, we'll miss the important bit, and we'll miss the smoke, or the flames, or the fire, or the destruction of the workshop, whichever it's going to be. So 1.3 amps going through, 4.44 uh, volts at the moment, we'll just drop a fraction, but nothing to worry about. So the highest charged cells in a pair are cells 2, which are these two here, and they've got 3.763 volts stored. Uh, I think 3.75 will be just fine. It's still above cells, pair, that one, four and five. And then we're pretty damn close. I think the charger should accept it. If the charger doesn't accept this, then we know it has to be a problem with that circuit board. Now, just while we're waiting for that to charge up, I was looking at uh, battery pack number two, and I noticed there was a bit of corrosion around here, and sorry, just a bit wary of the one. If you look down here, pointy stick time you'll see that the circuit board itself has been affected by that corrosion so I think we made definitely the right call to junk battery pack number two because this circuit board is most definitely junk uh, given the fact it's got all this corrosion around here and that might be another reason why it wasn't charging up so plenty of reasons to be honest yeah okay let's see where we're at power, pack. power supply is off 3.65, okay, a bit further to go yet. Power, power supply back on again. Any heat? Nope, no heat. Okay, I might just tweak that voltage a fraction more, bring it up to 4.5. That'll do, 4.6 nearly, 4.57 volts. I know that when you overcharge these things, it can be a serious problem, so I'm going by the heat of the cell to give me some kind of indication that we're starting to overcharge, but I don't think we are. We're still way below the amperage rating of these batteries. And I mean, when this packs on the charger, you know, 15 minutes and it's charged up, so we're way, way below that. Okay, let's just check again. I'm getting a bit concerned at the moment, so we'll turn the power, power supply off. And we're down to 3.67. Okay. Fraction more. I remember that the reading that these shouldn't drop below 3.7 volts. So we need to get over that 3.7. Don't forget, at 3.7 volts on the cell, we've only got 4.5 volts in the circuit. We've only got a 0 0.7, sorry, 0 0.8 uh, of a volt differential push that current through the circuit. Just in the same way as you know on a car you're charging your what we call a set point voltage is about 14.5 volts and that's for a, um, you know, a lead acid battery that's basically 12.6 volts fully charged so you have to have that voltage differential to, to, uh, to create the charging effect I suppose to get the current to flow through the circuit. Okay see where we're at now getting so close, 3.69, we had a 3.7 as it was dropping. Right, let's just try that and see where we're at. Okay, so we're holding 3.7, so we're pretty close now. So we'll crank that up. I'm gonna very finely tweak the charging voltage again. Remember chaps, I'm working in the blind here, so. Yep, we seem to have lost current flow. We're no longer charging. What's going on? We've blown the fuse in the meter? Maybe. 
It shouldn't do, it should be rated to 20 amps. Okay, so obviously I've got a fuse, I think a fuse to change in the meter, so what I think we should do now is try that battery. So we'll turn the power supply off, everything's safe, <laughs> relatively speaking, we'll disconnect these two. And uh, we'll go to the side of the bench, I think, and we'll, we will reassemble this power pack and we're going to try it in the charger. Right, there's a new power pack and two small holes towards the thingy, so that way around. There we go. Okay, so pop that into there. Obviously it's a bit tight with these these bits. Normally there's some insulation across here and well if we fix it then I'm gonna add that. Come on, you can do it. Right. Okay. It's in. What else do we need? Well, we need a release and we need a spring. The spring goes on there. Release goes on there. And we hold that down. That's the best way of doing it, I think. Drop the top on. Then, well, we can put some screws in. We'll just put two in, I think for now. There's one. A special little screwdriver that fits that quite nicely. Right, that's one. And we'll put one in this side here, look. There we go. Okay. Right, we need a charger. Right, I remember this battery has been put on the charger many, many times, even on camera. Um, when Tool Girl Hannah was here, we were doing that sort of quick charge test in the first fix video. So, um, you know, if that rule of three strikes and you're out, and it, it sets the logic so it can never be charged, well, that could be the reason here. So the charger's powered up, it's in the, uh, in the mains, plugged into the mains, we've got the flashing green lights, slide it on. What's going to happen? Oh. Okay. Not happy. Right. Well, I think, because we're so close with that voltage, I think we should change that circuit board next. And see if that cures the problem. If it doesn't, then I'll continue to charge up those middle cells. Cells three, the pair in the middle up to 7 point, sorry, 3.75 volts and we'll try it again. Damn. Oh well, let's crack on. Actually, I almost forgot. Somebody said to me, hey Andy, maybe your charger's faulty. Okay, well, whilst we're on, let's get the, the one that I haven't used for years, the black charger. Again, it's plugged into the mains, we've got the flashing green lights. Same battery, battery number one. Let's try it in there. Now, we don't get the beep on this one, it's maybe a budget version, but again, flashing lights. So that one also tells us that it's not going to accept this battery for charge, so definitely a problem with the battery. Damn! Well, sorry that the uh, the multimeter, the ammeter, blew its internal fuse. I don't have the right fuse for it at the moment, I was using a different fuse that I found lying around. Probably not quite the right rating. So I sense a bit of tin foil and a a nail coming up for that one but uh, anyway let's pull this apart and uh, get the old soldering iron fired up and replace that circuit board and who knows maybe just maybe that'll be the answer to getting this power pack working again here we go okay well you've seen me pull these apart a few times now but here we go again man it's gonna be a party time when we get this thing fixed isn't it but once we know the formula of what's required, it's going to make fixing the other ones so much quicker, isn't it? Right, get rid of that. And Mr. Springy. Okay, I'm going to pull the whole thing out. Hopefully. Okay. 
very tight fit in here. There we go. Okay, so what's to be done? Well, there is Mr. Circuit Board. So we've got the negative over here, so that wire needs to go down to there. Remember this is live as well, we've got you know quite a considerable amount of energy stored in that power pack. Um, we've got this little fusible link thing down here. That one needs soldering on there, and this one needs to go backwards and down to the side there. Okay, we can do that. Alright, so we need some snippers first of all, I think. Maybe desolder that one first, I reckon. Let's see if we're up to temperature. And I've gone straight for the big soldering iron because, you know, the little one doesn't do a lot. Okay, right. Uh, ooh, I know what I've forgotten. Safety glasses. Just in case. At least that way, when I'm dead, you can say, at least he wore his safety glasses. Okay. those pliers because my fingers are a little bit ah oh, maybe not actually might short things out okay fingers are good we can do fingers little screwdriver maybe man I really don't want to short these things out there we go okay that's that one off Right, so we'll just undo that. And that'll release the circuit board from the board, from the unit. Now, as regards soldering this end, I think we'll have to just snip that off at that little tab there. Let's do that next. Sorry guys, it's all work in progress. Haven't done this before, so bear with me. Plastic insert, probably won't need that anymore, maybe. We'll disconnect that. Out. Seems to be something here which is embedded in the in the plastic. Don't know what that is different to the new boards. So. Okay, that just pulled clean out of there. This one has it sat on the top, whatever it is. So, we won't worry about that too much. Okay, now all that's left to do now is to snip off this wire. There we go. Right, that's the little dangly bit here look that was down in the plastic and you can see on the new board which is like that they've put it on the top side of the board so it doesn't go down into the plastic anymore all right so we don't need to worry about that too much it just sort of sits in like a resin okay right now that plastic bit seem to sit and just support that. So if I look at one of the other ones, we can see it there, look. So it sits with that bit to the back. Okay, so it just goes under there and supports that piece. So we'll leave that where it is. Okay, new board too sure where the hell that's going to sit but um, anyway I do remember some people poking them between the cells it's not going to happen on it because we've got that already there I don't want to risk any chafing so and it's got to go on that way around so we'll just try and tuck that inside the block when it's finished so that needs soldering on there that onto there and then the little wire 
just out the side. Okay, we can do that. So I think the first thing to do is screw it down to the board, really. So that wire's all onto here, and that's the negative that goes straight onto here anyway, so it doesn't matter about that. It's got to be a good fit, hasn't it? Otherwise it's not going to fit in the casing. That little hole lines up pretty well. Flat screwdriver, where's that gone? There we are, that's probably a better job for this one. Okay, that's now down on there. <clears throat> I think we can afford to desolder that and get rid of this piece and just solder it straight onto there, maybe. So I'm just going to pull that out sideways. God, running commentary, isn't it? That's what you do on videos. I'm going to trim that down a bit, we don't need all of that. There we go. And we're going to solder that onto there. Cool. Okay. We can do that. Right. Just tin that wire first. Good. It's not touching anything, it's not in the way of anything. Just tidy that wire up. Right, okay. Remember, this is live, so it's not the easiest way of doing things. Right, well, nothing else really goes onto this. I don't think we need to have that bit sticking up anymore, so we can just tidy that up. Maybe we should just solder onto here. So I'm just going to snip that out the side. In fact, we could be really cunning and trap it under there, couldn't we? So I'm just going to drop that inside. And that solders on straight onto here anyway, so I just want to snip that little tag off at the end as well because that's sort of just going to chafe on the circuit board and we don't want that. There we go. Okay, so we'll pop that into there. It doesn't matter if it cuts through the insulation, it's all the same. And then we're going to fold that over the top. Or well, maybe we should tin it first. Hang on. Jeez, sorry, terrible camera work. <laughs> and it sold it onto that. You little bastard. There we go. Well, at least it's soldering on, that's a good, good sign. Okay, 
That looks pretty good. I'm hoping I can still get the cover on. I should be able to. I'll just fold that over best I can. There we go, look. Okay. So that's all soldered up. That stays somewhere. And all that's left now is to solder that onto there. Okay. I'm just going to extend that fraction. Use, uh, ta da! Eric's wire strippers. It's a really small wire at all. Might be beyond the. Might have to just use the little snippers on that. I don't know if I can put it too short there. There we go. Right. Good job, Eric. He'd be laughing his head off watching this. And he does watch my videos. He commented one the other day, actually. Good job, Eric. Right, just tin that wire. Easy one now. Oh, it's such a good soldering iron, this. Okay, well, to all intents and purposes, that is now installed on that power pack. All that's left to do is to reassemble this tuck that somewhere where it's not going to be in the way hopefully don't know give it a go nothing to lose I suppose right so I have noticed when people have been doing this on on YouTube that everything's very very tight it's filthy is my, my work mat isn't it come on Tang I need a new one Okay, let's get the right around. So little lugs to this end, and it is to point to that end. So that is to go in there like that. So close. Right, I'm just going to test fit the, fit the lid before we use that bit, just to see where this can go. See if there's enough room for it. Maybe. Uh, beyond there, look. Don't know. Maybe in there. Don't see any gaps? Can't go there, that's where the little slider is. They've sort of used a lot of the space up, haven't they? So it goes out around. And these are the air vents for the cooling, so we don't, we don't block those up either. It's right there, look. There. See what happens. Yeah, not enough room there. Jeez. Oh, there's a bit of room underneath the circuit board. Maybe we can tuck it under there. Look, that might work. That's where it should go. I think by the looks of it. Okay, I reckon that'll work. So we'll get the little spring. There goes a screw. Put that on there. That sits on there. Push it down. Pull it down. Fit the lid gingerly. Jeez, it's going to be tight. This side's all right. This side's really tight. Something's not quite right. I think it's that. That sat higher than it was. So maybe I'll just take that little support out from underneath, that bit of plastic that we that insert that we that fell out earlier on. Let's take that out. Uh, that's if that chafes no that's not good. If that chafes through that insulation, that's gonna cause a problem and probably some death going on so we'll stick that back in there again maybe we're gonna to have to remove a little bit of the plastic on the inside here so up there maybe. tell you what let's put some paint on it and see where it touches Okay. Push 
pushing it down. You can see any yellow paint. No, me neither. Try again. See, it's rocking on something, look. Might be that bit there. Look, it's just. I suppose the easiest way to do this is just melt it out of the way with the uh, soldering iron. Sorry, soldering iron. Let's just try that. No, it feels more up here actually, in the middle. bet it's that wire there. It is, you can see where I've squashed it down, so I'm going to have to... Oh, it's not going to, is it? Because there's a little plastic bit in the way. <clears throat> okay, we know what the problem is. The problem is that white wire. <sighs> Let's just try and relieve that. Let's see how we're going to do this. Everything is live, so I'm being really cautious with this. See if we can get those wires on that side of that bit of plastic. Okay. Ah, don't do that. Remember the circuit board's now got current flowing through it, so we'll be super careful not to not to short out the circuit board. You know, Ben's outside cutting the grass and it's bloody cold and it's pouring a rain. But he's a good lad. Alright, so. Maybe, just maybe we can tuck that all down there. Looks all right. And that red wire down there as well. Everything's very tight. I feel sorry for the people that assemble these in the factory. It must take them ages. <laughs> all right, let's give it a go. Spring back on. Okay. And push that down. Offer that up. How we're looking. Alright, I'm going to go with that. It feels a lot better. It's not perfect. Right, screws. Those big box. Alright, stick one in there. stick one in there I might just put all four in actually because you know there's not a lot more we can do with this one is there okay just so it all sits right one in there doesn't take long and last one people one oh no it's killed his lawnmower one in there Right, jeez. <laughs> Here we go. Right, so it's going to be the green charger first. It's still plugged in. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Yes! <laughs> Fantastic! Look at that, it's charging up. Oh, that wasn't good. Sorry, camera. It suddenly stopped charging like there was a bad connection. All right, we'll try again. There we go. 
Okay, well, we'll leave that to charge up and see if it, see if it works. Ben has run out of fuel. Yes. Right, the battery, that one, power pack number one for verification, has been on charge on the Makita charger, on the bluey green one, until it said it was fully charged. Here we have the Makita drill. I'm inserting the battery into the drill and yes hey Ben yeah. I fixed it <laughs> right so I want to run that battery all the way down till the drill stops and put it back on the charger again and test it again in fact I've got an angle grinder that will burn this down a lot quicker bear with me Right, this thing munches through batteries, so we'll pop it in there. There we go, look, little, little flashy light comes on the side when you... Oh, God. If you watch that little light there, look. It tells it recognises a new battery. There we go. Cool. Right, we'll leave that over there. It's very dangerous. Yes, yeah, so I know it's missing the guard. My fingers know about that. Very useful though. Right, I'll flatten that a bit later on. Okay, so what have we achieved in this video so far? We've charged up individual cells to a point where the battery charger, they're, they're all at equilibrium or near enough within a tolerance that the charger will accept. And we've replaced the... the uh, Where's the other one? Hang on. I've got a spare one, so I can do it to camera. Here we go. We have replaced the genuine Makita circuit board with much logic to say you can't charge the battery with a cheap Chinese version, which has now allowed the battery to be recharged. Now that doesn't mean to say that it's a it's as safe as it used to be because there's there's less protocols in the logic now to prevent the battery from being charged if there's an issue. So I'm always going to be a bit wary about those batteries. I'm never ever going to have that one on charge overnight. I would only charge it while I'm around, that's for sure. But um, yeah, not a bad little thing. And this only, well, only cost a few dollars, so definitely worth a go. So the next video, and this is going to continue, the next video is going to be me doing the same thing to the next two batteries. That's going to be cells four or battery pack number four I've got a, uh, I've got a basically a cell in there to charge up that we identified in this video and then maybe I've got to replace that circuit board as well don't know we will find out and of course battery pack number three same issue one cell that's way down on voltage and it might need that circuit board changing as well just don't know Okay, crew, well, I'm going to sign this off. I've got to whiz out and get Ben some more fuel for his lawnmower while he's in lawn mowing mode. Thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. mm, you're on camera, son, so you might as well smile. <laughs> okay, crew, well, if you found this video helpful and informative, then why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, if you don't mind, first point of contact via the comments on YouTube. There's also a new Patreon page. You can drop onto there and find out all about the history of the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, why it came around, and, of course, up-and-coming future projects will be posted on there as well, so you can see what kind of videos are going to be launched or released in the next few weeks or months. That's the plan can't guarantee it's always going to go that way but it's an idea at least where I want it to to cover things that I'd like to cover and that's about it job done busy little afternoon really chuffed the rain sort of held off, off enough for the audio my sincere apologies about Ben and his lawnmower I will do a video on that because no doubt you're going to be intrigued as to how on earth a lawnmower can have two engines yes Benjamin it's a bloody liability but it's actually a little bit safer than his first contraption and if I can find some video footage I'll, of, of the original design I'll put it in that video as well for you because it's 
bit of an eye opener. Okay, crew, well, until next time, see you around. Cheers, over and out. Hey, tool girl Sam, how are I'm you? Back. You're back! It's Fantastic! So I know, and I've got a new shirt, so I thought it's only right that I give you a new shirt too, so there you go. Yes. So excited for my new shirt, then I don't have to wear different shirts every day. And as a classic Tall Girl Sam move, I am going to wear it like this. Wow, well, would you look at that. I'd say that is a great present for your girlfriend. If she's into tools. If she's not, she's probably into tools because you're a tool. See what I did there? Tool girl shirt. Perfect.